walk into the woods, yeah, I walk into the woods, walk into the woods, yeah, yeah. Ah, Mr. Postman, could you please take this very ancient and very cursed VHS tape to the household of Super Game Eskimo? Y'all yeah, drop it in the mailbox, right? No, you must put it inside of the house. Inside of the house? Inside of the house. Do this for me, and I shall give you an unlimited supply of KFC. Now that is some motivation. I will get this posted right away. <laughs> Damn, I love being so fucking evil. Run, sucks! What the fuck is going on? Let's put it this way! Someone wants us dead! <coughs> Not alive! Ah, <coughs> oh, fuck! Shit. <coughs> it looks like we're left with no choice. We're gonna have to... Complete the game! Our story starts with Gruntilda, a witch. And as we all know, witches are notoriously ugly. So it should come to no surprise that when she asks her cauldron who the most attractive person in all the land is, it shows someone else. Tootie, a young brown honey bear. But honestly, how should I feel about this? Am I supposed to find this bear more attractive than this woman? I mean, I get it, she's a witch, and that instantly makes her dank as shit. No offense, Emma Watson. But Tootie? isn't even the same species as me, so... Should I even rate it? Okay, uh... She's okay! There! I said it! She's okay! But spoiler alert, Gruntilda gets way hotter! Well anyway, Gruntilda's pissed as shit and she kidnaps the fuck out of Tui! But she doesn't really put up much of a fight, she sort of just stands there. And now it's up to Banjo and Kazooie to save the day, hallelujah! So here we are, Spiral Mountain. You see, because it's a spiral and not a taller mountain. This area serves as the game's tutorial, and you can actually skip it entirely if you tell Bottles the mole that you're good enough. And look, he's a mole. Moles are blind, so they gave him little glasses, so he can see. Aww. But zero eyesight times one pair of glasses is still zero eyesight. Eh. If you decide you need the training, then Bottles, along with some sentinel vegetables, will teach some basic moves, like the rat attack rap, rolling, and how to punch. Because apparently Banjo didn't know how to punch before he met Mr. Miyagi over here. <laughs> After you finish fucking around, it's time to head to Gruntilda's lair. The lair itself serves as a hub world and your means of getting from level to level. And speaking of level, here's our first, Mambo's Mountain. And for a first level, it's kind of all over the place. Like, there's apes so it's a jungle, but there's a bull so it's a farm, but then there's tribal stuff so it's Africa, and a big ass termite mound so it's Australia, and then there's Stonehenge so it's Salisbury? And this isn't a mountain, this is a hill at best! But okay, okay, let's say that this is in fact a mountain. Why the fuck doesn't Spiral Mountain look anything like Mumbo's Mountain? And that's another thing. Mumbo appears at almost every level. He transforms you into different animals. Like in this level, he transforms you into a termite so you can go up the termite mound. So if this isn't a mountain and Mumbo isn't a defining part of this level, shouldn't this just be called Termite Hill or something? Nah, fuck it, I don't care anymore. Levels are just obstacles for two things musical notes and jiggies. Jiggies are used to complete puzzles that open up new levels and can be attained in a variety of different ways. Sometimes they're out in the open and sometimes you have to complete a task. And then there's musical notes. There's 100 per world, and you use them to break down these doors somehow. When you make it past the door, you meet Gruntilda's sister, Brentilda. She says she's here to help the duo out, but I'm not really sure you can call this helping. I mean, who the fuck cares? There's a puzzle over there for the beach level treasure trove cove, and oh boy, I sure do love this beach slash cove. Especially when there's. Crab! Crab! And a rock claiming to be an island of shark food! Ah! So fuck every part of this level! The only safe part is this boat, so let's talk to this captain! <laughs> this is the 
This is Captain Blubber. He says he's lost his treasure, but it's just inside of his ship. I'm pretty sure that's exactly where it should be, right? Did you even fucking look? And whilst we're at it, could you explain to me how the fuck you got this fucking ship stuck like this? It's inconceivable! And so is the way you drain the sandcastle of water. See, this bucket has a leak, so you fill it with eggs, which somehow fixes the leak, allowing the sandcastle to be drained of water. What the fuck even is that shit? How does fixing this bucket's leak make this- ah! The weird thing about this level is that it used to be my favourite, and I don't know why. I used to like hanging out over here for some reason, but I fucking hate the ocean! And you know what? This is why- I don't care. Next level shit. Clanker's cavern is, let's face it, a sewage facility. That means that all of Grunthilda's waste and all the trash cans outside of Banjo's house probably end up right here. And I'm swimming in it! I wish I could say some interesting stuff about this level, but there's not really much to talk about. It's pretty empty, and most of the level actually takes place inside of Clanker the... Robo-Shark Wellfish! Eh. The only other things you meet are this fish and a troop of mutated crabs, so... Let's just wrap this shit up in a montage! This is the fucking montage! This is the montage! Hope you enjoy it, and if you you can fuck yourself! Moving on, we come to Bubble Gloop Swamp, and this place is odd as shit! Metal crocodile, check! An egg with a jiggy inside, check! A giant crocodile head, check, check, check Besides a giant crocodile head, what is it meant to be? I figured it was only swamp decoration, but there may be more to this than meets the eye. So the only way in or out of the crocodile head is via the nostrils, which are way too small for Banjo to use unless he's been transformed into a crocodile. Whilst inside, you meet a much larger crocodile called Mr. Vile, and due to his size, it can be assumed that he wouldn't be able to use these tunnels to escape. His only purpose for being here is to challenge you to an eat-off, but could there be more to this place than just a minigame? I mean, if he can't escape, this has to be his only food supply, so could this be some sort of prison where his captors wanted to either die of natural causes, or by him choosing to slowly starve himself to death? Probably not, but it's something to think about. Now look at this turtle. He's got cold feet. The solution? Tuck those fuckers in! And to reward you, he opens his mouth so you can go inside of it. Is this really what's inside of the big turtle? Holy shit, it's fucking Tip Top! You know, the guy from Diddy Kong Racing! The game Banjo was also in! I'm Banjo! In Banjo Kazooie, Tip Top's running a school for turtle singing. The next level is Freeze Easy Peak, a Christmas themed level. And I tell ya, Rare knows how to set a mood. Look at these little houses! I wanna be in there! And what would a Christmas level be without a Christmas tree? Ta da! <laughs> it's lacking lights, but have no fear. A box of Christmas lights is over here. So go on, do your thing. I mean, I'd love to help these guys out, but these are living creatures right here. Nah, fuck you guys, Christmas rules! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about! Wow, presents! I hope it's not Xbox, or PlayStation, or Xbox. The water on this level is so super cold that touching it actually hurts you. So I'll just warm up by this roaring fire. And sing a song. You may have noticed that the majority of the level is taken up by a gigantic snowman. Who the fuck even built this thing? It's so big that when you stand on its hat, you can't hear the level music anymore. That's my door out to draw. And although it's really big, you find yourself nearly falling off all the time. Especially when you try and get the jiggy from his pipe and the ginger from his broom. Fuck this man! I'm out of here! Whee! Somehow, falling from great altitudes on a sled with sharp metal blades leaves this guy totally unscathed. This is Boggy. Boggy must be a pretty cool dad. Look at these pictures. The kids, the snowman, 
Banjo Kazooie himself. Wait, Banjo and Kazooie? But I thought this is the first time they ever met! I'm just gonna get out of here before I wake up in a bath with all my organs missing! You stocky motherfucker! Well, how are they going to top the Christmas level? Dude, you ain't seen nothing yet! Get this! There's a Halloween level! Um, okay. Do 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 do! I don't think you heard me right! There's a fucking Halloween level! This level's pretty great, but it's actually not the greatest Halloween level ever. What has the best Halloween level then? The Simpsons Hit and Run. It's basically Grand Theft Auto Simpsons style. But anyway, level 8 is just pure Halloween heaven. It's just so fucking cool! Pumpkins, witches, skeletons, and zombies that won't bite. Spiders, ghost ships, other things to keep me here all night. I don't even play the game on this level, I just use this as a Halloween simulator to tide me over to October. If there's a better Halloween level out there, please let me know! Just fucking finish. Mad Monster Mansion has all sorts of cuckoo for you too. There's a bat, who's in a maze, urns that say, Thank you. Evil gravestones, the mansion, even, Skeletons. and a church that's actually based on a real church in Rare's hometown. I've never been there, but using Google Maps, we can travel to Twy Cross England and check it out for ourselves. Ha! <laughs> They're really fucking similar! Ain't that some shit? Look guys, Mad Mumbo's here! Hey, why isn't this level called Mad Mumbo Mansion? <laughs> anyway, in this level, Mumbo transforms into a pumpkin. That's like a fucking dream come true! I am Halloween! Also, to celebrate all this Halloweeniness, Mumbo's part of these eyes as decorations? Yay! He decorated his skull in the other worlds too. In Freeze Easy Peak, he had mittens, cause it's cold, but isn't eyes a real weird choice for this level? A bat silhouette is clearly the obvious choice, but fuck it! Eyes! As Banjo Lantern, Banjo can now fit into small places. Like the toilet! Whee! Cool shit aside, this level's building seems to be suffering from TARDIS syndrome. If you go inside the church, you find it's a lot bigger than the outside suggests. And it's not just the room, the seats and the organ are both huge too. But that's a mystery in itself. Why is everything so big here? Well, I have a theory. When Banjo Kazooie was in the beta stages, Gruntilda's lair was once called the Giant's Lair, and as the name suggests, a giant would have been the antagonist instead of a witch. This is probably why Gruntilda is so big on the box art, and probably why everything is so out of proportion in the church and the front room of the mansion. So yeah, leftover giant stuff! The next level is based on ancient Egypt, with pyramids and a sphinx to boot. But is there a reason for him having a blocked nose? I figured maybe it was a joke, because the real sphinx in Egypt doesn't have a nose, but I think that might be a bit of a stretch. <laughs> anyway, there seems to be pictures and even statues of Banjo and Kazooie everywhere, which is fine, maybe they're just ancient ancestors or something. But am I really supposed to believe that Gruntilda would allow images like this in her lair? And don't give me that, uh, she doesn't decorate her lair shit. The previous room has a statue of her, and the next room has a giant face of her. So that must mean... That bitch we decorate. That bitch we decorate. I told you, blow your mother, fuck us, why don't you listen to me, motherfucker? So this plant guy needs some water. Where the fuck am I gonna find that? Well, I've looked everywhere, but I can't find any water, so I've resorted to smashing this camel in the back! Hello, this is Peter. Step away from the camel. Imagine feel with it. Well, that seemed to work, but I'm pretty sure this guy looked better before. So you may remember I mentioned pyramids earlier. They all have a jiggy inside and their own way to get it, but I only want to focus on one. When you enter King Sandigot's pyramid, a mummy suggests you turn back. If you don't heed the warning, the doors lock behind you and you'll have a limited time to escape. If you fail, then you die, but if you succeed, you'll be able to go into King Sandy Butt's tomb. And seeing how this is his tomb, shouldn't he be here in some form? Dead or alive? I mean, he's obviously had a sarcophagus made for him, but there's only a jiggy inside. So I've come to the conclusion that the mummy at the start was King Sandy Butt, or that King Sandy Butt was in fact a jiggy. Magic carpet? A whole new world! <laughs> Don't worry, you're actually pretty good at this game, no homo. I 
know socks, I know, but the last two levels are intense as shit! When I played through Banjo Kazooie as a kid, I somehow unlocked the last level instead of the one before it. So we'll be doing Click Clock Wood, the actual last level, first. Cause that's just how I roll. As a level, Click Clock Wood is the biggest and most interesting. For starters, there's four different doors that lead to a different time of the year. Spring, summer, autumn and winter. I'll explain how it works. In spring, you can hatch an egg, holding a baby bird inside. In the summer and autumn, you have to find caterpillars to feed him, so that when you finally go through the winter door, a chick will have grown into a huge eagle. It's all one big puzzle, trying to work out how to help the animals of the wood at the right time of the year. Take this squirrel for example. He eats his acorns in the spring, so by the summer, there's none left. So in the autumn, you have to find some more so he can hibernate in the winter. And then there's this beaver. In the spring, a boulder is blocking the entrance to his house, but you can't help him out due to all the water. So you have to go to the summer door when all the water is dried up so you can break the boulder. And there are lots of things that happen like this. Someone builds a tree house. And in the spring, Mumbo can transform you into a bee. But in the summer, he's too hot. In the autumn, there's leaves covering the transformation pad. And in winter, he's on vacation. And leaves, once used as platforms, eventually die. It's all good and kind of beautiful. But then something terrible happens. Rusty Bucket Bay. If all the levels were hard, I'd be bad for your son Cause you were never gonna be able to finish this one The water on this level is so poisonous that swimming on the surface warrants loss of oxygen And if you're under the wall, you lose it twice as fast And guess who's back? <coughs> so fuck going in the water, man It's essentially off limits So sorry dude that clearly needs my help Yow motherfuckers is dead Everything on this level is just so evil. Life rings are evil. These things are evil. And crates are just plain mean. I hate this level. There's a lot of cool rooms and stuff. Like this cabin with a beta picture of Berry from the Conga series. And this room that for some reason has plans for Treasure Trove Cove. But as a whole, this level just doesn't interest me. But since I've got all the jiggies, yes, even one from the boiler room, we can now leave this level and start wrapping this shit up. As a final obstacle, Gruntilda set up this board game. Each square has its own unique task. Sometimes it would just be simple trivia, and other times you have to complete a mini game. The questions about Gruntilda can be pretty hard, but if you revise a Gruntilda beforehand, you should be fine. Alternatively, you can just do what I do and just guess that shit. Once you get to the other side of the board, you'll get Tui back. And then the game's over! Yeah man, that was fun! That wasn't so- Oh yeah, the witch. You're fucking dead, son! So here we are. The final moments of Banjo-Kazooie. The duo fight the witch on top of the lair. But she's hard. Like, really, really, really fucking hard! If you make it this far, prepare to be fucked and fucked again! Cause Gruntilda is honestly one of the hardest boss battles I've ever encountered. It's not that her attack plan is particularly hard to remember, it's just that she attacks so fucking accurately! And you can lose some health in some pretty bullshit ways. You'll think you're safe, and suddenly get hit, without even knowing why! I can't really understand it, but Gruntilda almost predicts her next move, and it seems like if you try and run away, she'll almost always hit you. During the battle, some gingers realise that Banjo needs their help, and after putting a few eggs inside the statue, they summon the ginger layer. Heck, it's only because of the ginger layer that Gruntilda finally gets... Gingernated? <laughs> I don't want to blow my own horn here, but that is the funniest fucking shit I've seen. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, anyway. Gruntilda falls and is trapped under a boulder. And everyone celebrates. Again! We did it, Socks! We completed the game! Should I destroy the VHS tape? Nah, don't worry about it. I doubt that'll work. Let's just sit here and linger, rot, forever. No. Oh, <laughs> that was easy. Let's get some pussy.